Martin Scorsese's classic crime film Goodfellas follows mafia hood Henry Hill from being a child fascinated with mob culture to being a fully fledged mobster. Henry is an associate of Lucchese mob capo Paul Cicero, who mentors Henry. Another mob associate who takes Henry under his wing is Jimmy Conway, known as Jimmy the Gent, played by Scorsese regular Robert De Niro. Jimmy is one of the primary characters in Goodfellas. Labelled wild by Paulie and a man who takes too many chances, Jimmy, as Henry tells us, is the kind of guy who does robberies for the thrill of it, and a man who rooted for the bad guy in movies. He is nowhere near as brash and ostensibly violent as fellow mobster Tommy DeVito, played by Joe Pesci, whose volatile behaviour involves beating and shooting people out of the blue. However, Jimmy is a very high earner for the mob, so out of the three main characters, Henry, Tommy and Jimmy, all three of whom are not made guys, Jimmy is the most important. He's also, I think we can all agree, the most dangerous. Sure, Tommy might scream and shout a lot more, but Jimmy is far more intelligent and cunning. He avoids being murdered in retaliation for the death of Billy Bats, something which Tommy is unable to escape from, which I detailed in another video called Why Was Jimmy Not Whacked For Killing Billy Bats? He is also one of the primary masterminds of the Lufthansa heist, which at the time was the biggest cash heist in American history. In spite of being so close to Henry and his wife Karen, after it appears Henry might be going to jail and therefore might be looking to flip on his friends to avoid a heavy sentence, there is a strong suggestion in the movie that Jimmy was going to mercilessly murder both Henry and Karen. Before we continue, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for more videos like this. Jimmy's terrifying nature and sociopathic tendencies are no better exemplified in the film than in the death montage after the heist. The joy of the caper is quickly turned to rancor as Jimmy's paranoia manifests, his paranoia that his underlings' imbecilic actions will lead to the attention of the police. Everyone is told to keep a low profile, but one fool turns up to a restaurant in a new car, another with a new coat wrapped around his wife, and another accomplice stacks forgets to dump a truck used in the heist which ends up getting found by the cops. Suddenly, bodies begin turning up everywhere, which is Jimmy cutting the link between himself and the robbery, in addition to having the bonus of not having to pay the other mobsters involved in the robbery their cut of the booty. One of the murdered individuals, we can presume, is the wife or girlfriend of one of the mobsters, so we can assume then that Jimmy has no qualms about bumping off anyone close to him, whether it be Henry, Karen or anyone else foolish enough to get on his bad side. This is a man who is greedy, selfish, a killer with no remorse or empathy. One such person, who can't seem to help always be on Jimmy's bad side, is Maury Kessler, an annoying but somewhat lovable and endearing friend of Henry who owns his own hair salon and wig accessory store. Who doesn't love Maury? He's a funny guy, and after all, Maury's wigs don't come off. Well, one person who doesn't is Jimmy. Supposedly, Maury borrowed money from Jimmy, but the interest rate charged back to him was not something he agreed to and he found it unreasonable. Essentially, Jimmy was extorting Maury. This causes friction between the two, with Henry always in the middle trying to maintain the peace. Funnily enough, Maury spends the remainder of the film pestering Jimmy for money, as he feels he is owed a cut as he helps set up the Lufthansa heist. In fact, it is while watching Maury sing the rather apt line, the summer's gone and all the roses die, that we can assume Jimmy gets the audacious idea to wipe out his entire crew so their stupidity doesn't come back to haunt him and he can keep the money. Maury is also someone on Jimmy's kill list. In fact, his name was probably at the top written three times and underlined for good measure. Henry understands that Jimmy is looking to take out Maury when Jimmy starts asking questions about whether Maury tells his wife about his criminal activities. This can be interpreted in two ways. Either Jimmy was weighing up the risk of killing Maury, i.e. if he did tell his wife things, the wife might then go to the cops if her husband is killed. But I think a far more sensible interpretation is that Jimmy had already made his mind up about killing Maury and was now deliberating whether he should take out the wife for good measure also. Jimmy tells Henry to bring Maury to a restaurant that night and in the next scene Maury is there, with Henry anxious about trying to talk Jimmy out of killing Maury. As far as Jimmy knew, Henry was still going along with the programme. 
The boys are having a great time playing cards and laughing away, Jimmy in particular, who looks slightly drunk as he leans into Henry and says, forget about tonight, implying he won't kill Maury, which takes a load off Henry's mind. The way the scene is played, it looks like Jimmy just can't be bothered with whacking Maury, he's having too much of a good time. Henry makes a big deal in the voiceover of saying how lucky Maury was that he avoided being killed that night, however, in the very next scene, Jimmy, Tommy and Frankie Carbone are seemingly approached by Maury, who again pesters Jimmy and begins asking for his money. The guys engage in small talk, get in the car and suddenly, Tommy stabs Maury in the back of the head, killing him. Out of all the scenes in Goodfellas, this is always the one I found quite bizarre. We go from the movie making it such a big deal that Maury had a close encounter and avoided being murdered, to literally Maury being murdered in the next scene. So why exactly did Jimmy seemingly want to kill Maury, change his mind and then change his mind again and actually go ahead and kill him? When I first watched this scene, I assumed that this was a few nights later, but that's unlikely as they're all wearing the same clothes as in the previous scene. I believe the intention was for us and Maury to be in a false sense of security and then be presented with the shocking but routinely executed murder of Maury. I understand now what I didn't the first time I saw the film that Henry saying, poor bastard, never knew how close he got to getting killed, was to disarm us as the viewer for what was coming next. Well anyway, I think we can maybe rule out Jimmy having a nice time at the cards table, choosing not to kill Maury and then being ambushed by the man when everyone is going home with Maury again asking for his money, leading Jimmy to become aggravated, change his mind and have Maury whacked. You could make this interpretation from the way the film shoots this scene, but it's highly unlikely as the murder was clearly a planned one and there was no visible communication between Jimmy and the other mobsters with him signalling that they are going to whack Maury. Jimmy does look at Tommy while he's laughing and walking to the car, but it's brief and I don't think there's anything in it. The idea that Maury was in the clear and talked his way back into Jimmy killing him is ironic and sad, but from what the film presents, I don't think that's what happened. Maury was always going to be killed. He was part of the Lufthansa crew owed money, plus he was annoying. There was a big red circle on his head ever since Jimmy gave him the stink eye, and the gent never changed his mind. Rather, Jimmy saying forget about tonight may have been a way of saying the murder of Maury is going to be delayed for another day because we're drunk and we're having a great time so why ruin the evening? And then by chance, Maury happens to approach Jimmy and then Jimmy decides to go ahead with it anyway. A rather more sinister interpretation I feel is that Jimmy was aware of Henry's feelings for Maury and said forget about tonight to Henry so that he goes home and is kept out of the picture. On one hand, it's nice of him to keep Henry away since Henry obviously would be distraught about it all, but he could also prove to be a hindrance by trying to talk Jimmy out of it and thus was kept in ignorance by Jimmy and told the murder was off. It's also scary in a way how Jimmy is able to so easily read Henry. Henry says in the voiceover, as far as Jimmy knew, I was going along with the program, but that's what Henry thought and it appears Jimmy picked up on signals Henry was inadvertently sending, so put his mind at ease and left him out of the picture. It's the same kind of people reading that perhaps leads Jimmy to try and whack Henry and Karen later on in the film. I believe what happened here is that Jimmy thought Henry might be a problem with him not being fully on board and never having been part of a previous hit, so he says to Henry forget about tonight and Henry misinterprets this advice as thinking the hit is off when it's actually just him being removed from the hit. And because the movie is told from Hill's point of view, we experience the same shock of learning Maury was in fact murdered. So Jimmy never actually changed his mind and there is no logical reason for him to have even done so. It might also be worth mentioning that not only is Henry an unreliable narrator, but the real life Henry here is thought to have embellished facts in his recounting of events. According to the film, Henry is not present during the hit. So how exactly did he know that Maury got whacked for sure? Obviously it's still highly likely so let's avoid that point, but it could be a case of Henry being a part of the mob hit, but leaving himself out in the retelling of the story so as not to implicate himself in a murder charge. It's convenient that he's there at the table, but isn't there at the actual murder. Henry Hill was attempting to obtain a deal from the feds after his arrest on narcotics charges. He isn't exactly going to start saying he was involved in killing a guy who was so bold he made his head look like fucking mirrors, excuse my language. 
Him sympathising with Mori and trying to stop him getting killed also makes him a more likeable protagonist, so it has that added bonus as well. In fact, you would think that Mori might be distrustful of Jimmy and he wouldn't get into a car with him, meaning that perhaps it was actually Henry himself who murdered Mori, as Mori at the very least trusted him, so could have been lured to a sinister location by Hill. On top of that, as far as I know, Henry's account of the murder of Mori is the only solid one we have, and no one has ever been charged or admitted to the killing, meaning that it's entirely possible, however unlikely or likely, that this entire situation didn't even happen, and Mori died in a far more different way. Maybe he really did run off with a brawl someplace. So there you have it. Why do you think Jimmy decided to kill Mori, seemingly changed his mind, and then changed his mind again? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.